Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So, I was thinking to myself the other day, wouldn't it be interesting to build some sort of winch or grappling hook that you could shoot into another ship, attach, and then pull that ship away? So, that is what I basically constructed. I've constructed this form of grappling hook, so we've got a sharp point on the end there, and we have a coil that coils inside the ship, and then basically when it's coiled up, we should be able to technically release it. It'll fly out like this, and then into the target where we can pull it away. So I'll show you the basic winch wind-up project now. So we need to just whack ourselves a cockpit down here so I can demo how it works. I've took the side off just so you guys can see it. So we get inside, like so, and then we press K. We go down to our rotor. Rotor, rotor, rotor. There you are and we turn the rotor on number one and then we put the RPM up let's call it about that and what we should see is the actual thing start to come in and start to cycle and wrap itself up so this would work as well once you've hooked your ship up you'll start to turn this and it'll start to bring the ship towards you with the grappling hook in obviously you have to put the RPM up a little bit so what this basically does is it swings around and it'll just continue and basically hook the actual ship up so as you can see it's spinning there and it'll continue spinning until the whole thing is inside so I might skip ahead shortly until we've actually got the whole thing in so while that's co uh, actually coiling up I'm just going to show you the inside of the ship itself so you've seen the ship before it was originally the torpedo design but since then I've used it for a lot of different testing in a number of projects the chains coming in very nicely this little filter here allows it to actually push in and coil correctly so as you can see we've got the actual main piece coming back in here so when this starts to arrive what we want to do is slow the coil coiling up and prep our landing gears so ready to lock it in position so it's a little bit harder this part and I'm just going to delete these and prep it ready they were just in case any collision comes in with the coil so we've got them in place and it's going to take a few minutes to mess around getting this perfectly in position so I'm just going to skip ahead. Right so the hook is now technically locked in place, we've got two landing gears holding it in position. The chain is coiled up correctly, let me just check that, I'm going to get rid of that piece as well because I don't want anything interfering. And yeah, I'm going to probably just seal up the side of the ship as well so we don't have any sort of interference as we could say. As I've shown you inside. right. So over here we've got the chain fully coiled and it should deploy, should, because this is the first time I'm testing it just to see what the results are going to be like. We need to set up a target, so I'll get on with that in a moment. Right, so the chain's in place, the target is up over there in the distance, some smiley head, and we're going to try this out for the first time. So let's actually get in our control panel and set up the thing. So right, so inside, K. Okay find our rotor, 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 where are you? Uh, there you are. So what we need to do now is we need to turn the rotor off and put the brake in all the way up to that. So when we actually fire this thing, we'll stick that on zero and hopefully it'll come out in a coil and look absolutely stunning. If it doesn't, then I do not know what we'll do. We'll have to try something else. Right, let's begin this anyway. Forward we go coils are staying in position. I expect a little bit of flexing. You can see I've also took the side panels off the front because I realized when you actually released it there was there was a few issues. There was a few issues. So I'm trying to avoid any possibility of failure with this test. Once we've got it sorted we can start putting some housing around it perhaps and uh, we'll get the design absolutely spot on. Right so I think we've actually came up to the actual ideal target area here. So K okay. Remote, remote, there we go. And we whack this all the way to zero and we press P. So, fingers crossed, this uncoils and works correctly. Please work. Right, okay. So, it worked, but we didn't get the penetration that we actually need. So, I think we're going to have to go with probably another test on that maybe get a little bit closer because it worked very well but it just didn't give us that last bit of punch that we wanted to get through the target and penetrate let's actually have a look at what we did so 
we did we did a little bit of a dint. But we want to get the hook through and then be able to pull it back so we don't have to test this out again. So bear with me. Right, so we've set the braking torque to off and we need to hit P as soon as we stop. Right, so grappling hook is away. Fingers crossed it penetrates this time. A little bit better. But we need to really work on the penetration. Maybe the actual hook's too big and it's stopping it from accelerating and getting through. Hmm. We don't have to work on this. Right, so for this run, I'm going to try a little bit different again. And I've put an explosive tip on the end to hopefully break a little bit of that penetration and be able to let us get a little deeper into the target so we can actually grab onto it and then hopefully pull it away. But I'm still not sure what the results will be like. So we're coming towards the target. We just need to get up to that mag magic speed of about 50 velocity. Any further, any higher than that. There we go. Perfect. And there we are. Onto the rotors. Rotors, rotors, rotors. Where are you? There we are. We whack that to nothing and then we press P. So fingers crossed now. Here we go. This is looking promising. Oh, the explosion managed to shake the chain too much and snapped it off. Damn it. Let's try it again. Right, so this is the next experimental version. I've changed the sort of dart, sort of grappling hook shape. So the fingers crossed that it'll make a different sort of impact. I'm hoping it's going to swing to one side due to the blocks being unequal. And it'll actually curve into the target this time. So we'll actually have to see what we get with this one because this one's going to be a bit of a surprise even for me so we're aiming at the target we're hitting the magic speed, we're at the magic speed and all we have to do now is release what I'm going to do now is release it a little bit earlier just so I can see if that will affect the actual impact of it so take the braking off and then we hit P so fingers crossed this works okay Okay, we got an impact on this one, but it still wasn't as good, and we've lost the actual hook. Hmm. Seems like we've got quite a situation. Right, so we've got another another test, another experiment, right? We've gone with the warhead tip, but I've gone with no side actual plate, so hopefully we'll get a nice steady penetration, and we'll get a big enough hole to get the rest of the hook through. And it's not working as well as I would like to hope this, but hopefully we'll get a result with this one. So we come up to the target, I'd say that's perfect. And rotors, 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 where are you? And rotors can't be found, oh there they are. We turn that off and then we pee it straight away. So <laughs> right in the face anyway. Um, but the explosion itself looks like it's caused enough inertia to actually stop the initial sort of forward motion. So if we hop outside, so basically what's happened, we've impacted the target and we've caused a big enough hole to actually go through with the grappling hook, but we've not actually caused enough damage. So it looks like the only way of actually doing this would to have some sort of initial explosion to breach the hull so then we could actually grapple through it. So that's something we're going to have to try out next. So we're just going to go for a final attempt. It's not really worked out as well as I was hoping, but hopefully it's give you some ideas and inspiration to build some of this stuff. In a moment, I'm going to show you how to build the winch mechanism as well. So we're going to go for this last attempt, and we're just going to try to get to maximum speed before we release. And we're going to release it. That's three, two, one. Rotor, where are you? Right, there we are. Uh, right, that's a nothing, and then we hit P as soon as we come out. Right, so final attempt, fingers crossed. No, it's nothing. Let's try pushing it in. No, it's it's it, it's a great idea, but it's it, the concept of it doesn't work as well as I'd like to, and you can't really wrap it around because the actual grappling hook stays flat unless you turned your ship like so, and then you could p possibly wrap it around a target, but. Let's move on to talking about how to get a winch going for yourself. So we'll leave the ship there floating. The nice coil and effect going off there. That's probably going to swing back and hit the ship. But let's go over here. There's the target floating away as well. Absolutely beautiful, the physics in this game. So let's move on to constructing the winch for yourself. So you can use this in all sorts of things. Obviously, the grappling hook didn't work as well as I'd like to. But maybe when I mess around with it a bit more, I can get it perfected. 
But the first thing we want to start with is the base, and this is what I call the rod. The rod basically holds your cable or your blocks in that line. So the next thing is we want the connector. The connector will connect your actual rod to the actual line of chain or whatever you want to call it. And what I like to do is get in here first and T and then a K and then basically set these upper and lower limits to zero so that it can't really move that much because you don't want this one moving because it'll damage and basically start twisting and, and basically you ruin your design. So now we need to start on the cable and you want to think here how is the cable going to wrap around? So in this case you want it to wrap around this way. So we'll just start to build out like this. I recommend doing three of these little blocks if you're going to do it because if you do it too long it doesn't coil as well and you want this coiling as well as you possibly can. Obviously the motors in this is going to be a little bit tedious for you but it could be really interesting. I mean you could use it for a tow rope tow a friend out of a situation, you could use it for a grappling hook, that, that don't seem to work that well, maybe that's just my creation though, but you can also use this for small doors on um, like a, say you wanted a station door, like an airlock sort of cool sort of thing, maybe like a half-life one, you could also build them with this, you could have a rope pulling it up and then a rope pulling it back down into position if you build some guiders for it, but I can always show you that some other time. Right, so we've just made the basic rope. Now the next thing you want to take into consideration is guide rods because what's going to happen is it'll start spinning out and have like a tail on it as it spins around. So I'm going to show you what to do. You basically just build along here and you've got to think now how far you want these guide rods away from the actual rope. You don't want it to be as long as the rope itself so I'm going to recommend probably about here for this length of chain. If it's any longer you might want it further away, you might want it closer. So there's the guide rods. And now all that's left to have to do is get inside and pull this chain in and wrap it around. So T, K, and then we basically go in here and we turn the velocity. I recommend starting with a low velocity and then building up and you'll see how the guide rods start to help straight away. As you can see it swings it around here and usually it just swing off a tail but the guide rods just help in to smooth it around the angle. And then if it flicks out the tail here it'll help it smooth around as well. And basically, you never want your actual rope to ever do this. I'll show you what it's going to do. It's going to actually swing out in a tail. So you want some sort of padding on the sides to keep it within the rope. And you want this to do as tight as possible. So you can see there, what's going to happen is this tail's going to swing out. And what I'd usually do is have this in some sort of box so this couldn't happen. But thanks for watching. And hopefully I've inspired you to do some interesting creations. And I'll see you next time.